Hey, it's Lucky. Today I wanted to take a look at these three demos that were posted to Reddit. Uh, they're all about photorealism in Godot, which is super exciting for me because Godot making a push to photorealism is awesome. And with the new lighting system, there's a lot of potential here that I think is left unused. All these demos are using a similar technique, uh, which I'll explain at the end of this video so you can make some photorealistic stuff as well. The first scene we're taking a look at here is this alleyway scene. Uh, the model is amazing. It's a photo scan model. And I think the camera shake and the walking animation really sell the effect well. The walking animation might be a little too extra, but I think it's fine for the scene. Lighting looks great. The next demo we're taking a look at is this body cam demo. Uh, this one is amazing. I should have used a similar environment for my demo. Yeah, the lighting here is great. The blown out windows and his vignette is a lot more professional than the one I used for my demo. Yeah, it looks amazing. This one is actually done in Godot 3, which is even more mind blowing. But yeah, I think what both these demos really sell is when you have a nice environment, preferably something photo scanned, and you add a little bit of camera shake to it and some realistic camera effects, you can achieve photo realism without too much headaches. And that's what I wanted to teach you at the end of this video. We're gonna be setting up this scene. This is my demo. I found this photo scanned environment on Sketchfab, and I'm gonna show you how to find environments as well. I'm going to show you how to set it up in Godot, match up the lighting, and get some nice photorealistic results in no time. All right, let's get into it. So let me show you how to set up one of these scenes. Uh, it comes down mostly to your 3D model, preferably a photo scanned environment. They're the most realistic. And the biggest part about this is finding one. There are a lot of great uh, scanned models. On Sketchfab, you can just look for scanned or scanned environment. You can see there are a lot of these amazing uh, 3D scanned environments, but most of them are paid. Make sure you enable downloadable. And you can see if the models are uh, paid or not by the little dollar sign on the top right. Otherwise it just shows a download button. But yeah, there are a lot of amazing models here. This one is free, but this one is not perfect. And I'll explain why. Uh, this one, for example, would be amazing for a game. Uh, but it's $25. I mean, if you're making a professional product, sure. But if you're just playing around, I wouldn't recommend buying expensive models. But these type of scenes, they're perfect for games because they're uh, enclosed, meaning they got walls on all sides, so you don't have to make up some geometry for missing pieces. And that's actually what we're looking for. Uh, scenes that are rooms or uh, in caves, so they're covered on all sides. And I actually found a great guy uh, who makes a lot of these scans for free. Miguel Mondera, I probably butchered that name, but yeah. This is the model I used for my previous demo. It's this old amphitheater. It's actually beautiful. Uh, I'll quickly pick another one just for example sake. But you can see all these models of his are free. And they're super high quality 3D scans and they're actually quite optimized. So let's use this one it's this beautiful temple and you can see the vertice count down here keep an eye on this some 3d scans can go up into the millions you might not want to use those they might be a little bit too much but yeah this guy makes great ones that are quite low poly so i'll show you how to set it up in godot now uh, we're just going to go down and download this 3d model i find that glb versions work the best for some reason Sometimes the GLTF uh, imports the textures wrong and the OBJ doesn't come with textures applied, so you have to apply them manually, which can be a pain if there's multiple textures. So I'm just going to use the GLB version. I'm going to take the 8K texture size. It's not that big, 20, 26 MB. It's quite alright. So I downloaded this to my desktop. I'm just going to rename it real quick. Oh, don't open it. Rename it. So Temple scan, and I'm gonna open up Godot. I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna drop this in my Godot 4 folder. Create the folder. Call it photo scan tutorial. Uh, make sure you're using Forward Plus. And the first thing I'm gonna do is import the model. So I'm just gonna create a new folder in my file system by right clicking New Folder. Call it imports, right click on the folder, new, oh, 
new folder, call it models. And in there, I'm going to drop the photo scan. Now, when importing big assets on Windows, Godot is probably going to crash. So you're just going to have to wait a little bit, maybe reopen the project. I'm just going to wait for a little while. All right, so it imported. Next thing I'm going to do is create a new 3D scene here in the top left, call it world. And within that world, I'm just going to import or drop it, drag and drop my temple. You can see it's already looking great. I'm just going to click on the node in the hierarchy, go to transform and reset the position. Let's go inside it. And now what a lot of these photo scans have, and I'm not sure why, is uh, they have their albedo texture as an emission. This means that the model will never catch any shadows or can be lit differently. And a very easy way to fix this is just by going into your scan, right clicking it and clicking make local. And then going onto the object and setting a surface material override. So I'm just going to click this and on the zero and I'm going to click new standard material. And now it just goes all white. And I'm going to click the material, go down to albedo for the texture, hit quick load and select the texture that came with the model. Uh, your scan might have multiple textures, it's actually very common, but then you just go down all the material overrides and apply the right textures. It can take some time, but it's really worth it. Because as you can see right now, there's already a different lighting. This is because the sun is actually shining on it, but we don't need the sun in this scene. So I'm just gonna... Uh, here on the top, disable the sun. And I am going to add a world environment. So on the three dots on the right, click add environment to scene. And I'm just going to do that to enable uh, STFGI. It's the global illumination. So just click your world environment, then on the top right world environment and enable SGFGI. And now you can see it goes really dark. And that's because we haven't matched up the lighting yet. So I'm going to go into the top view. And I'm going to add in all the lights. Your scene might be outside and you might be fine with just the sunlight. For the demo I showed previously of the amphitheater, I just used the sunlight and it worked great. But for this, I'm going to add a point light to all these doors that are emitting light. I'm quickly going to create a node for this. So just a node 3D. I'm going to call it lights. And in here, I'm going to add one Omni Light 3D. And then I'm going to lift it off the ground a little bit. And in the light, I'm just going to uh, increase its size to 0 0.3 because these are big uh, emissions of light, big volumes of light. And I'm just going to turn the energy up to 1.3. And then I'm going to dra oh, drag it to the door to match up the lighting. And I'm actually going to enable shadows. And then you can see the cone it's creating because with the hallway I'm gonna just match it up with the photo scan so you can see these baked lightings just gonna pinch it so it's almost the same duplicate it move it to the other side again matching it up duplicate it move it to this hallway matching up the lighting duplicate it again match it up here Actually, isn't that much light in the original scan here, but I'm just going to add it anyway. And here. And now when we take a look in the scene, it's looking great. This room is looking too dim, so I'm just going to add an artificial light. This wasn't in the scan, but just to make the scene look better, I'm adding one light here at the top. And this is really where you can go all out, matching up lighting, uh, fine tuning environments. You can also go into the world environment and down here at adjustments, enable these. You can start tweaking with uh, brightness, contrast and saturation values to really find the photorealistic look you're going for. I'm not going to mess it with this too much here because I'm trying to keep this quick. But yeah, you can go as far as you want. But uh, yeah, why we did this matching up the lighting is because now we can add in our own meshes and objects. I'm just going to demonstrate this by clicking, uh, by adding a mesh instance. 
and just as adding a basic uh, cube. And now you can see when you move this around the scene, it's actually catching the lighting that is present within the scene. And it's reflecting off the walls because of that SGFGI. So yeah, I'll quickly add in a camera so we can run this. Just to rotate it around. Drop it in here, preview it real quick. Yeah. So now if we run this game, select the current and call it main. You can see we got this awesome photo scanned environment. Now I'm quickly going to build a first person controller and drop it in here. If you want a tutorial on this, I already made one, I'll link it down below. One last note I wanted to add on using photo scanned environments is if you want to create collisions, uh, build them manually. Just add collision shapes. I'll quickly show you how. I'm going into my temple scan, add a child node, static body 3D, and then adding a collision shape. Collision shape 3D. And I'm just going to use a box and build it out so it matches the floor. And you're going to want to do the same for the walls and everything. Don't use the mesh as a collision shape because these meshes are extremely high poly and it's going to be very ineffective. So yeah, I got a collision on the floor now. I'm just going to drop in a, a first person controller and I'll be right back in a bit. So yeah, here's our final product. You can see the first person controller I used in the quick start guide was important here. And it's looking amazing. I mean, for a free engine with a free photo scan, five minutes of work to get this level of lighting and interaction and being able to add your own meshes. Uh, like I showed in the demos, some camera shake and some other effects can really help sell the photorealism. But yeah, even without it, this is already awesome to look at. And for a free program with a free photo scan, this is amazing. I mean, you can't beat it. So yeah, let me know if you make anything awesome with it. Uh, be sure to link me if you make some projects. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.